And let's all stand and open our Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 58. This is a well-known and everybody loves and that I always like to uh, give somebody uh, as a good encouraging word. Let's read all together <coughs> twice. Well, only one verse, then we will read twice. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Ready, go. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for once again reminding us and being to be encouraged that our labor in the ministry for the Lord is not in vain. Lord, help us to be strong. Help us to be not moving because of the money, because of the relationship, because of the situation of the family, whatever, the trials or difficulties attack us. Lord, please help us to be much more stronger, especially the brothers and sisters who are going home. And they've been living in Korea for many years, and they are now thinking Korean way, living Korean way, and being used with the Korean circumstance. But now they are moving into the strange land, different land. Help them to be adjusted. Help them to be stick to the ministry, no matter how far, how many rides they have to ride. Please help them to be consistent. Lord, please give me the wisdom that I can preach your word more than what I have prepared with the help of the Holy Spirit. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. If we uh, read the, uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, uh, there is uh, what Jesus said to Apostle Peter when Apostle Peter and Jesus was uh, having conversation. <coughs> Jesus told to Peter that he said, I will build my church. Jesus himself said, I will build my church. Everything, everything that he said is accomplished. Except one thing about his second coming. All things accomplished whatever he said. So, when he said, I will build my church, that we, we know that Jesus is the one who started the New Testament church. And we also know the main purpose why Jesus decided to set the, the build the church in this world is according to, according to the plan of salvation that God has prepared that He wants the sinners of this world to be saved. That is why He said He will build His own church. So because of this, when the sinners met Jesus Christ and accept Jesus Christ as His personal Savior and His soul is uh, saved or regenerated and then He came together, he came, they came together, this abolegate Christian came together and that is the church that Jesus has told us that He will build. And once that souls who become spiritually born again as a part of the church, they go through a, the line of spiritual training process from the basic easy steps to the upper steps and the more higher and more higher and all these born again Christians who are going a step by step through the spiritual training program. 
And once they are prepared, the Jesus is sending them to the world. You go to Dewadong. You go to Dongdaemun. And then bring the new souls to the Lord. That is what exactly that we are doing now. Because God has saved us. Jesus has saved us. And then told us to go out and reach out the soul and bring them to Jesus Christ so they can be saved again. And this is the ministry that the text today, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58, is reminding us to the people like you and me who got saved and who are continuing the ministry of door knocking and soul winning and he is saying the God is speaking to our heart today be steadfast don't be moving under no circumstances no matter how difficult it is in Korea no matter how the temperatures go below minus but Bible is encouraging us be steadfast don't be movable because of the weather because of the working condition because of the personal problem that you have the Bible is challenging us be steadfast be unmovable and not only that God is also challenging us work more work more that is the second part of the 58 for as much you know that your labor is not in vain in front of the uh, always abounding in the work of the Lord always abounding in the work of the Lord that means abounding work more continue your working even though even though you may face some difficulties and until when not until you go back to the Philippines some people even though they say that there is no Bible Baptist Church there is no fundamental church uh, within one hour two hour ride uh, but still, some brothers and sisters who were faithful in, in Korea while they're working, but they do not continue. They do not continue their faithfulness because of the situation. But we should not give in to the circumstances and give up our faithfulness and steadfastness. We should continue not until you go back home, but until until we die, either we die or until the second coming of Jesus Christ. So in order to in order to follow what uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 challenge us, be steadfast and un be unmovable and work, work more in the Lord. In order to do these three we have to understand. We have to also understand that there's a two things that must not be changed. There's two things that must not be changed. The one, the first things that must not be changed so you and I can continue to be steadfast and unmovable and work more. The first thing not to be changed, must not be changed, is the church. Church should not be changed, must not be changed. What about the church? It's a building. We should not change the color of the building or we should not change the size of the building. Or we should not change from the, uh, the rented building to the own building? No, it's not the building. It's the people. The people who come. We sh then all in all, as a one group, the teaching, the doctrine of the, the doctrine that is taught in this church should not be changed. And the standard of this church as a fundamental Bible believing and practicing church, the standard or the basic should not be changed. And the practice of soul winning should not be changed. You can easily find many churches in Korea and also in USA, also in the Philippines. Many churches, they say they are Bible Baptist church, but not, not many of them are not doing the soul winning. Because soul winning is not easy, easy a task. Soul winning demands many hours of your sacrifice. Sometimes many much more money of your earning for your own traveling for the, uh, the visitation and soul winning but and also the church must not stop 
teaching the people in the church so the same doctrine same standard and the practices the practice of soul winning the church must teach that we have a the uh, distinctiveness of the Bible doctrine, the Baptist church but among the doctrine distinctive of the Baptist church the first one always come the authority of the Bible if we know only by the knowledge the authority of the Bible yes the Bible has to come first place in every places or the word of God has to be always authority we agree but we do not practice when we make some decision when we make some decision of my, of my own for the future plan of the family business or uh, some the, the thinking about some job choosing the choicing that we, we do not refer to the authority of God and we make our own choice then we are not practicing that the church must teach the congregation <coughs> the members the people that we must always consult what the Bible says about our decision or our plan we cannot follow the fashion of outside world when we decide or when we follow the word of God because the outside there is a many for example the whole world is changing with a movement of a woman liberation liberation from what there are many arguments but because under this uh, big slogan of a woman liberation and they even in the church they said they allow the women pastors in the church I am not downgrading or the underestimating the ability of a woman in the church ministry they are more more productive and more and more contributing to the ministry sometimes uh, comparing to other uh, when compared to the men's activity but because the Bible says just because the Bible says no argument I'm not saying woman is less than man or man is less than the, the better than woman no just because the Bible says there is should not be the woman to be a, a pastor or a deacon why because the Bible says the, the qualification of a, a pastor or a deacon has to be a man of a woman the husband of a woman then maybe later on somebody may uh, argue yes because I'm a we are we are the uh, gay so I am the man side the, the husband side <laughs> it, it, it is a sad the world is a changing the church should not change in the teaching the doctrines of the Bible and also that we also need to teach the brothers and sisters in the church how to follow, how to obey, and how to practice the word of, word of God that we are learning or we are reading in the Bible. And so, they can be taking part of the ministry. There are, as you know, there are many kinds of ministry in the church. If from, the, from the preaching and to the cleaning. Maybe tens of a ministry that is required and needed in the church ministry, and everybody has a, some portion that they can be part of the ministry. And the church has to be this way, uh, rather than hiring outside forces to replace all these uh, dirty works in the church. And the church can become like a, a very, very fancy and a nobleman's club. And have to church also have to send them to do the soul winning and uh, do the door knocking even though in the Pampanga because they are very new church it's hard to uh, train them from the but I have told them there's a two two climates in the Philippines wet or hot and unless it is wet let's go to the door knocking <laughs> I cannot really uh, force them to go on door knocking on the the raining, but if it's not wet, let's go down our thing, even though it's a very hard. Of course, it's, it's very hard when it is a 35, 36, or sometimes a, almost a 40, 40 degrees. It is hard, but if we try, God will appreciate. So, this is what the church must not be changed. 
Now we are facing, the PPC is facing something that we have to be careful. During us 11th, uh, 11th ministry, 11th years of the ministry, and uh, the longest period that some of the brothers and sisters who were trained in this ministry is from the 2004 or 2005 up to now. Because they are the first batch after the, the EPS that they start allowing them to extend another three years. So, this, this group, this batch, from the uh, late part of 2004 and early part of 2005 until 2011 to the early part of 2012, they're the ones who are trained and practice almost up to five, to five to six years in this church. And they have been the leaders. They've been doing the leadership and doing the, all the ministry and they, they pushed me out to travel more on the, <laughs> the Philippines. <laughs> but now, as you see, all these uh, long year trained leaders are going home. And one by one, and then we have, we have left a very few. December 27, Brother Phil will go. And uh, the next year, that uh, Gary will go. Brother Gary will go, and uh, who, who will go also? Uh, plus, plus will go, and then May, the May or this May, and so all these people will go, and of course we will train the second batch, the next generation. And what I am saying is, the church must not be changed in order to, in order to be steadfast and be unmovable and doing the more work of the Lord, the second batch who are now training. The people who are remaining with the unlimited visa, they are also responsible. <laughs> they are also responsible because they are trained. And so with this church, we should not bring the our quality of the church, the, the strength of our doctrine teaching, or uh, practicing soul winning, everything, we should not bring it down. We should not be changed. So the next generation leaders, whoever, from now on, under the training, or of course, by the end of this year, that we will look for the new generation of the leaders for the 2012, and all of them, including the past leaders who are still here, we must do our best. The church should not be changed. Amen. If the church is changed, all the people in the church will be changed. Very, very easy. If the church leader, for example, me, is standing here and teaching you the vocabulary, like the little boys and girls, and listen, this is the hand, and this is the finger, and this is the, if this is the index finger, and this is the thumb. <laughs> if you are two years old, that you will never doubt. You will never doubt that this is a, if I insist, this is the thumb, the index, and this is the thumb, then you will believe. If the church is teaching the wrong doctrine, or diluted doctrine, or so-called watered, and compromise doctrine, then you will follow. That's why the church must not be changed. And in order to continue to have FPBC Korea, FPBC in Bohol, FPBC in Pampanga, our the seminary, everything to be in the same level, same quality of the doctrine, uh, that we need to work together for the, our the level or the quality, spiritual quality, will not come down. Second, second, that must not be changed. The first is, the church must not be changed. Okay? Second, must not be changed, is each one of you and me. We as an individual brothers and sisters who are born again, the Bible calls them saints. So this saint is different from the saints in the Catholic, okay? The spiritually born again saints in Christ, 
We are the one we must not be changed. Sometimes the church is not changing, but many cases, an individual saints are changing because they are surrendered to the temptation, to the circumstance, and because of the money problem, because of the job problem, because of the relationship problem, and they are changed. And if the church is changed, God will move the candlestick from here to another church. If individual is changed, that God will withhold, withhold His blessing that was prepared for that person, and the windows of Bodega in heaven will not be open yet. That's what the Bible is saying. So we have to remember that we, not only the church, that we individual must not be changed. Let's review some of the points that uh, what, how, or where we should not be changed as an individual. If you can recall the moment of your salvation, and when you really repent your sins, and you have rep uh, repented your sins, and asked, for, asked God to forgive your sins, and you believed that your sins are forgiven, were you not thankful to God? Were you not thankful to God? Were you not happy when you when you knew that you are your sins are forgiven forever and that you are now entitled to go to heaven when you die? The joy, the joy we had when we got saved, and the gratefulness or thankfulness that when we got saved, we should not change that level. Many times. We know that our heart is being cooled down and we forget the thankfulness, the gratefulness. Once we forget that we, our gratefulness in our heart for what Jesus has done for my salvation, we become, we become ungrateful person. You know what the ungrateful person? The ungrateful person is somebody that who does not who does not remember the grace that you receive. We have a very good example in the Bible. One person had a debt 10,000 talents to the one master. And uh, he was about to put into prison or uh, so sell everything that he has to pay that part of that 10,000 talents. But he was pleading to the master, please, I will pay later. Do not, do not sell my, bro, my, my wife, my children, my position. I will pay you later. Please forgive me. And that master said, okay, I will forgive. Wave, wave your debt to me. So go and uh, do, you, do as you said. When he was released, uh, he happened to come across another friend of him who owe him only maybe 100 pesos. This is a 10,000 10, talents. This is something astronomically big, huge amount that you cannot even compute. Maybe 100 million or billion pesos or something like this. And then he found that one friend who owe him 100 pesos and he got angry and then he grab his neck and put him to if you cannot pay me now I will put you in the prison and then he really persecuted him and the neighbor friend saw this his behavior and he reported to his master that man who were forgiven one the ten thousand talents of a debt cannot forgive and one hundred pesos of a friend's debt and that man is called ungrateful person. If we forget what Jesus has done for us, He gave us, He gave up His life, and He gave us eternal life in heaven. And if we forget that joy and thankfulness, then we are following the steps of ungrateful person. So, we should not change in thanksgiving and obeying his life and be 
happy to be in the training of the church. Why? The church has a program to help you to grow spiritually. If you, uh, if you understand that, and if you agree to be uh, spiritually growing, you have to be undergo the training program. If you don't want to be sacrificing your time, your talents, and your even your transportation expenses, you are once again becoming ungrateful because you don't want to spend anything for the ministry, anything for your own spiritual growth, and then you are becoming ungrateful again. So training your heart that you want to be trained, don't change. Don't change. And once you decide to give your time and talents in the ministry, don't change. Be steadfast. Unmovable. And just, if you're doing the one ministry or two ministry in the church, and then if the church needs more, you volunteer. Pastor, I, will, I can also do this. And God will take care of you that. And then you're living, you're living quality as a Christian. Don't let it be changed because of the temptation, because of the money problem, because of the, any human relations problem. Do not let your quality of your spiritual life be changed in Christian living. And once you let it, your thankfulness, your obeying heart, your your readiness for the training and your sacrifice, if you let it be changed, you know what will happen? Your ministry will be also changed. Your ministry will be changed. How can you come here and sing in the choir when your life is being uh, outside is, is unacceptable? How can you say that you can do this and you can do this in the ministry when your quality of life is drastically changed? You can continue somewhat, but your conscience and God's Holy Spirit will conflict with you and it will not be possible. God is asking us to continue our sacrifice. In the Bible, sacrifice is equal to love. Love. So, one coin, I would say, coin has a two sides. If the front side is a sacrifice, the other side is love. You cannot separate love and sacrifice away. Because if you have a coin, one, 10 pesos and cut half in the middle, do you think it's a 5 peso value? No value at all. Nobody will accept that sliced the coin because it does not have any value. Same thing. If you want to say love and sacrifice are different, uh, be careful. You cannot do that. So, if we want to sacrifice, if we have a certain level of uh, sacrifice for God and for your, your spouse, uh, your husband or your wife or this church or your, your work, your readiness, your level of a sacrifice for these each four objects, God and your spouse and your church and your your work. Let's see what the Bible is saying. Toward the God, your sacrifice or your love. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5 says, And thou shalt love thy, the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. So this is a Deuteronomy 6 5. And the next, 1 John chapter 4 verse 20, it says, who, so, who, so, who says, uh, I, let me see, I have this, is the first John chapter 20, uh, first John chapter 4, verse 20. It says here, uh, If a man say, I love God, and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God, whom he hath not seen? Okay, so simply Bible says, you love your brother, you love your God, you can say you love God who is invisible. But if you are not loving your brother who is visible, Bible says you are liar. So this is our love toward the God, the sacrifice toward God. 
Let's see what uh, Bible says about the spouse. Uh, it's Malachi chapter 2 verse 14 and 15. Malachi is the last book of uh, the Old Testament. It says here, this is showing about your love that we must not change. Uh, it says here, Yet ye say, Wherefore? Because the Lord hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. Yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. Verse 15, And did not he make one? Yet had he, had he the residue of the Spirit, and wherefore one? That he might seek a godly seed, Therefore, take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. So this is toward, uh, toward the spouse, wife, or brother, the husband. And 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. This is a very common, uh, frequent uh, quotation. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8 says, But if any provide not his, uh, for his own, and especially for those his own house, he had denied the faith, and it is worse than an infidel. If we have our husband and wife and the family, and if you if you change your sacrifice and your love, that we should not change. Because the Bible is saying, be steadfast. Be unmovable and work more in terms of a loving, love more, sacrifice more. That is what the Bible is saying. And toward the church, how we should not change our love toward the church. John chapter 13, verse 35, it says, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. If we have love one to another, that means in a small congregation like this, rather than having conflict, rather than having division, sacrifice to one another, love to one another. Even though sometimes we disagree, we love one another. Because if we do that way, the outsider who does not belong to our church, they will see the difference of our behavior compared to outsiders and say, ah, these people in FPC, they are different. They must be the disciples of Jesus Christ. This is what Bible is saying. When we practice our sacrifice to one another, our love for one another, the people outside, even unbelievers will know that we are the disciples of Jesus Christ. And the next verse First John, the first John chapter 4 verse 20 is also mentioning about the law in the church. If a man say, I love God, which I read far ago, and hate his brother, he is a liar. For he that loved not his brother whom he had seen, how can he love God whom he had not seen? So, we have to prove that we have to practice and we should not let it down. Let it down. Toward, the, toward our work, the company that we belong. Colossians chapter 3, verse 22-23, it says, Servants, this means employees, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, according to the flesh, not with the eye service, as the men pleasures, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. So, even though we are not yet professional, so we make some bullion and uh, do some mistakes, but if we do heartily, they will know, they will see that we are different. And eventually, we will, we will get their attention. Ah, this is a good Christian. So, when we practice the sacrifice, our love toward the object, four object, to God, to the family, and to the church, to the your work, 
you should not dilute. Let your steadfastness down, your unmovable the consistency down, and your the faithfulness down. That's what the Bible is teaching us. So that's why um, also the, the, the Apostle Paul is through this uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, he's giving us a three exhortation and one uh, assurance. The first exhortation is keep your faith steadfastly. We have a, a faith in, in salvation. We have a faith in the resurrection of the dead. And we have a faith also that or if we if we entrust, if we entrust our life to the Lord, then the Lord will take care of his uh, our life. We have a we, we believe that. Once we seek, once we seek that uh, his ways first, then he will take care of us. Unless we worry first and we do our way first, then we cannot do that. And uh, the second, second exhortation that is given by the Apostle Paul is do not move in your hope. Do not move in your hope. Hope for the future, hope for the blessing in this world, the hope for the comfort that God promised to give it to you. And if we do not leave from the gospel, the word of God, then that it will be given to us. You know that our our body, once it will be decayed, and then it will be resurrected, okay? Resurrected into the special, special body, like what Jesus was resurrected. So, because of the promise of God, because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we should have all this hope without fearing what will happen in the future. If we trust what God has promised and then have a hope, then we will not fear for the next, after we return home, after we go back to Philippines. I know I have a short uh, talk with the brother Phil this morning. He did not say that he's afraid to go, he's happy to go, but I know in the heart, everybody who's been staying in Korea for five years, six years, or more, and he, the Philippines is a strange place for them. Right after they return, it will give them a shock for a while. I have seen with my own missionary from USA, he lived in Korea for 40 years. And after he returned, for many years, he, he cannot adjust himself to the American life. Even the America, he had a car, he has his own house, he has a church, he has a loving, loving uh, family, children there. But his mentality is always coming with the Korean way of. And he was misunderstood. He was, a, at first year, he was misunderstood by his own church members. He, he's a strange man. When he wants to speak to somebody, the Korean word comes out first. He had a very long year's adjustment. And he passed away uh, two years ago, but he still, he still remembered all those things. And now, when you go home, you have to go through this uh, fever. I mentioned to Pastor, the brother, uh, Brother Phil, when, when we transplant a flower from one part to another, do you know that flower also go through the fever for the adjusting to the new soil? Same thing. We are the soil also. Are we, are we not from the soil? We are from the soil. We go to another place, then we will go through the fever. I don't know, it depends on how many months or years that you will go through. Some people, before they adjust to the new soil in the Philippines, and the family kick them away, or the, they decide to go away, they go to another country. This is what we need to, why we need to have to trust in the Lord, that He will, he will take care of us, and unless you have this 
a strong faith that is very difficult to adjust. The more you will have to more adjustment. That's why we always cite and repeat and repeat and cite and Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 and 34. Let's do it again today. Matthew 6, 3, uh, 33, 34, it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take, therefore, no thought for tomorrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So don't worry about tomorrow. Seek ye first His kingdom and His righteousness. And then He will take care of it. The third exhortation is from Apostle Paul is continue your ministry or work more. Look at the examples of Jesus Christ. And the depth of love that we receive from God, we cannot return to Him directly. But there's an indirect way to pay to Him the debt that we have. Spending our time, spending our money in doing the soul winning, because we, that is part of His ministry. That's why He saved us to do His work. So we, by doing this, we pay our debt to God or to Jesus Christ. So this is an indirect, this is also direct, but a, it, it seems like an indirect way of paying our debt to the love of God. Knowing that our, our labor will not be in vain, as the Bible says. When we do this, definitely we have to believe that our, pain, our labor will, will not be in vain. And there is always a reward. There is always a reward. And the reward, when we say the reward, the reward doesn't mean only the reward in heaven. The reward in this world also. And Jesus has given us many promises that He came here not only to save our soul, but also to give us abundant life and many the comfort of life. And uh, He mentioned many times that there will be a reward. And so even though you are very small, you feel like you're very small, but don't think that way because God can use you and make yourself a big in the ministry. Even though you are not educated properly with the Bibles or something, but don't give up because God can still use you. God can still use you and His sinners for His ministry and then that you can be part of the leaders for the next generation after the first generation will go home. Actually, the first generation went home and the second generation is going home and the third generation we need to take over the church. So the church will not be changing our doctrine level, our practice level. Until when? Until my time is gone. Your, your, the, when the time of your going home is come here and also when the, the Jesus is coming back for the second time, we should continue as as Apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. So, he includes you and me also. Not only to Apostle Paul. So I will briefly list up the reward. Six reward. And then out of this six reward, three is in this word, and then three in heaven. Not in the cash cash form, not in the gold form, but in the name of the crown that the Bible is promising. There's a three three crowns in this word that we can enjoy. And there are three crowns that we can enjoy in heaven. The first crowns in this world that you, we must enjoy is crown of a thorn. Crown of thorn. Yeah, that is a gateway. 
that is a gateway if you are willing to wear the crown of thorn that Jesus wore. You know what Jesus wore when he was on the crucified? Crown of thorn. Okay? This crown of thorn is meaning your sacrifice. Your sacrifice in the ministry. Your time, your talent, your money, and everything that you give for the ministry can be counted as a thorn of a crown, the crown of thorn. If you are not willing to take that th crown of thorn, which is the gateway to the rest of the, the blessings and the reward, it will not be possible. Because you want to avoid the difficult part and you only take the sweetness. You have to go through the, uh, be ready to take the bitterness at first, and then the sweetness will be uh, waiting for you that's behind that. Second, that crown that is promised in this word is crown of uncorruptible. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25, it says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things, now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. So, when you do the door knocking, and when you go to the, uh, come here early to be a disciple, and then you do, you invest something, something from your own possession. What I usually say that we have a five possessions that most of the people, our life, which means our living, our whole life, and our heart, and our uh, time, those are equally given. One each, one each, and 24 hours a day. And then the, the talent, somebody has a two talents, somebody has only one, and somebody has more. And the money, somebody has a one million, somebody has a half a million. Or somebody has a, nothing. Okay? So this out of these five positions, how much that we invest in the ministry, then that you will get you are investing in the business of God, which will never face bankruptcy. That is the incorruptible crown. And the third, the third crown that you will receive as a as a reward in this world is a crown of rejoicing. Crown of rejoicing. First Thessalonians chapter two verse nineteen. He says, "For what is our hope, or joy, or a crown of joy, rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at His coming?" Now, when you are this morning, we had a leaders meeting as as every Sunday do, and one of the leaders was really happy to. Uh, tell they tell me and they tell other leaders that uh, we have a one soul got saved, and everybody say amen. How can he not be happy in his heart when he's proudly saying that ah in our team ministry uh, we have a one soul got saved, and how many people will be coming promised to come to church, and this is the joy that the moment that you are report. This is what we call it rejoicing. The crown of rejoicing. If you see, then let's say that you've been attending this church as a member for uh, three years, and then look back on Sunday morning, and then you have, a, oh, he is my fruit, and he is my fruit, and he is my fruit. And if you have your own spiritual sons and daughters in this church, are you not happy? That is a crown of rejoicing. That's what Apostle Paul said, that all the people that he helped them to be saved will be the crown of rejoice in front of Jesus Christ. So, if you are really do not have anybody that you want, even though you are one year or two year members, that you feel be, you should be challenged. Oh, I should make sure, I should make uh, how many souls? How many uh, the fruits of a spiritual fruit that I have to I have to should be able to count on Sunday? Now, if you do this, the three rewards in heaven is waiting for you. 
The first is the crown of eternal life. The people who got saved, we have eternal life in heaven. First, uh, James chapter 1 verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. If you have a temptation from money, from the relationship, from whatever, you refuse that because of the because of your your uh, the child of God, and then you will be adding this a crown of eternal life. Then you already have a crown of eternal life by accepting Jesus Christ, but this is also something that can be added to your crown. The second crown is a crown of righteousness. As we read from the Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, uh, which, is, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, but not to me only, but unto all, including you and me. We continue our faithfulness and do not change our ministry, do not change our faithfulness. And all this crown of uh, the, uh, not only the righteousness, uh, the, not only the eternal life, but the righteousness will be our reward in heaven. Lastly, the third, the reward that we can have in, the, in heaven is a crown of glory. First Peter chapter 5 verse 4. It says, And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Now, only if we continue ourselves to be faithful in soul winning and building the church and spreading the gospel and uh, do not change and be steadfast and consistent, do not be shaken under any circumstances or temptation and be ready to work more in the ministry. Those people are expecting this wonderful reward. Three crowns in this world and three crowns in the heaven. And it is only possible that when church is not changed and when individual saints will not be changed. We, of course, even though we backslide, our eternal life in heaven is guaranteed. Don't worry about that. But still, the reward in addition to the eternal life in heaven, we should look for. That way, we can really continue to build this church, even though first generation or second generation, uh, the leaders are gone, and the third generation who are under the training from the next year, and then we will be challenged to continue the ministry. But do not bring the level of the doctrine down, or teaching down, or the practice down. If we are doing the, the soul winning in the uh, in the Hebodong, at least almost every Sunday, unless it is uh, heavily raining or he uh, extremely cold, but if we decide, let's do it once a month, that is already bringing down. So if we do not change the church, the teaching, the doctrine, practice of doctrine, and the soul winning level, and the individual do not change, that the church will continue, and then our soul winning ministry will continue. And then after maybe five years or ten years, many of you will be in the church of a Pampanga, or church of a Bohol, or for church of uh, some other places that we are praying, and that we will be uh, praying for the, uh, the third churches. And your church, that's your church. If you are God's saved here, and then you should continue to uh, support. You're not just going back home and then you're uh, permanently separating from the FPBC ministry. If this ministry is the place where you got saved and trained, then you should remember to be part of it. So God will bless your life. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for so much for reminding us that we should be remain 
steadfast and consistent and ready to work more for the Lord so God can continue to build our church ministry as well as bless the individual our brothers and sisters. Lord, please be with the brothers and sisters who, are, who has already gone home and who are ready to go home. And Lord, also brothers and sisters who are behind and who are still in the ministry. So help them to be continuing so faithfulness and consistency and the readiness to be, to be used in the ministry so we can be used. Once again, thank you for the, the, the challenges that you have given to us this morning and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Salamat po.